Hi guys and welcome to my first ever YouTube video. My name is Jariela Valverde Vindas and I am a Costa Rican revert. <laughs> All right, so today's video, as you can see from the title, I'm basically going to be talking about my journey into Islam and the purpose behind this video is to help other people going through similar, a similar process or a similar journey. So let's get straight into it. Mm. All right, so um, I was first introduced to Islam when I was a freshman in high school in my world's religion class. Uh, we were talking about, or no, in my world history class, we were learning about different religions and uh, we learned a little bit about Islam. And before that, I knew absolutely nothing about it. I couldn't tell you anything about the religion. Um, so yeah, fast forward to the end of the year. Um, I met my friend Salzabil and I made some other Muslim friends throughout the year. But Salzabil took me to the mosque. Um, I'm not sure, I can't remember why, but I might, I might, may have asked her to take me. I really enjoy learning about the cultures and, and religion tends to be a part of, a big part of people's cultures. But anyways, so we went to the mosque and I kept going. I would go to like Friday prayers and I would, during Ramadan I went and I fasted and everything. But my intentions weren't in the right place and I, um, and I was using uh, Islam to kind of, ho in hopes that it would solve the, my problems and issues that I was going through at the moment. So after a few months, I just dropped it completely. Um, and fast forward four years, and during these four years, well, a little background info, my entire life, I've suffered with really severe anxiety. And for the past couple years, I had been battling with uh, depression as well. And so during like those four years or more, um, I was dealing with that, but like 2019 and 2020, that was my year, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I was going through it. Um, I had felt for the longest, like I was so lost. I couldn't set goals for myself because of my anxiety and because every time I did, like after a month, I would change completely. I felt like so pointless. I had no idea what I was gonna do with my life and I was giving up or I had gave up at that point to be honest. Um, and so, like I said, if I, we fast forwarded four years later, 2020, I met a guy. Yeah, a dude. <laughs> so um, this guy, he brought up the question to me. He asked me what I thought about Islam and I was like, I gave him a horrible answer, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't even give him a proper response. And it's because during that time that I learned about Islam, I never really took the time to learn the core beliefs and the teachings of religion. So I had no answer. And that stuck in my head. So when I went home, I went on YouTube and I started watching videos and trying to learn about Islam. And from that moment, I couldn't stop. I um, I would stay up 2 to 2, 3 a.m. in the morning watching videos and um, and I was just so interested in it. And uh, so a, a, while, a little while after that, I hung out with my friend Arad. I hadn't seen him in about a year or so. And, um, and for some reason, something inside of me was like, bring it up. Bring up the fact that you're interested in Islam. And I hadn't told anyone at this point, like nobody knew. And I did, and turns out my boy was Muslim too. And I was like, oh my way, no way. So we had a really great conversation. He gave me some books to read and that helped a lot. Um, and then fast forward like two days, um, I was at home, it was 4 a.m. And I, um, it was really weird, but I had this dream, I don't know if it was a dream to this day, but I was, I swore, I woke up and I was looking out the window and then all of a sudden something was on top of me and it was choking me and I couldn't breathe and it was telling me like I, not to believe in God, that he couldn't help me and all these horrible things and in my head I was trying to pray, like I felt it in my heart that I was trying to pray but I couldn't get the words to my head and I knew like that was the only way to protect myself or that I would like make myself feel better in that moment 
and I couldn't get the words to my head and finally I did and it disappeared and I started crying and whatever. I went to my parents' room. My mommy had to sleep with me. But I couldn't fall back asleep. And then in the morning I once I calmed down, I realized I think that was like my sign. I, I thought about it and I was like, I think I want to convert. Like this is my sign. I want to convert. And so I about a week after that. I hung out with my friend Haula Hager and um, I hadn't seen her in like four years or five years to be honest um, and she's Muslim too so I brought it home I told her about all that stuff and she was like girl it sounds like you've accepted Islam into your heart and I was like for real and um, yeah we had a great conversation as well and um, it was nice hearing somebody say that, and kind of scary too, because I was like, have I really? <laughs> um, and so, during all this time, by the way, I'm in the States, and then a few days after hanging out with her, I moved to Costa Rica. Um, so, um, I moved to Costa Rica, I kept learning as much as I could on my own, trying to learn how to pray, and things like that, because I'm still to this day, I'm struggling. But, um, I... There's not obviously a big Muslim community in Costa Rica, but I tried to reach out to some people so I could recite my Shahada because I really wanted to and I felt like, you know, I still didn't know a lot, but I didn't want to wait long any longer either. It feels like there should be like a step-by-step -step process for these kind of things, but there's not. Um, you can go into the religion not knowing a lot or knowing everything um, in my case not knowing a lot but I went to the masjid in San Jose and I recited my shahada and it was amazing and I made a really awesome friend that day as well um, and so yeah I guess that's the beginning of my whole journey how I was introduced to Islam and everything so there's a few things I also want to mention because lately I've been struggling. Um, I struggle with the fact that I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I feel like if I'm not going to be a perfect Muslim girl, then I just shouldn't be Muslim at all. And that's not the case at all. Everyone, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone fails. If you feel the need to take a step back, that's absolutely fine. I, I'm kind of scared of doing that because I'm scared of disappointing people and I'm scared of what other people will think, but it really doesn't matter what other people are gonna think. You're always going to disappoint people. I do all the time. And people are always gonna have something to say. People are always gonna be judgmental and people are always what I've struggled with a lot, <clears throat> people judging me for my past because yes, I've made a lot of mistakes in my past, but you know what the great thing about reciting your Shahada is? When you recite your Shahada, you are forgiven of all your sins. God forgives you for everything that you have done before that moment. So it's like a fresh, a fresh slate for you. You're good to go. <laughs> So don't worry about the things that you've done in the past. Um, when you got, when you ask God for forgiveness, He and recite your shahada, He has forgiven you for those things. So move on, move forward. Stop worrying about what other people think or what other people say. Like I said before, they're always gonna have something to say, whether you cover your hair or not. Because sometimes I do, and people are like, "Why are you covering your hair?" Sometimes I don't. People are like, "Aren't you Muslim? Why are you covering your hair?" People always got something to say. Um, and let's see. Uh, the last thing I want to leave you guys with, and the most important thing, because uh, yeah, yesterday I had my friends remind me because sometimes you lose track of what really is important. But remember, what the what the most important thing is is your relationship with God and staying true to Him and staying true to yourself and always having the right intentions for anything you do. It'll make life so much easier. And um, 
another thing that I wanted to mention because a lot of people always question like what motivates you what motivated you to like continue your journey into Islam the moment I started to learn about it I felt a change in my life in my mental health and my well like my overall well-being I was no longer having those thoughts of like ah, I hate my life what do I do I was grateful I woke up grateful every morning I was happy to be here I was happy to be alive I was grateful for God, to God for everything that I had and I just felt like I was finally becoming that person that I always wanted to become but it felt like I could never do it so of course I wanted that like motivated me to continue that's the best motivation like you just see and feel yourself grow and it's been amazing and I I hope that Allah um, helps all of you that are going through this same journey and makes this an easy journey for all of you guys. So thank you for joining me today. And a side note, I'm going to be making a lot of different videos about a lot of different stuff. So be on the lookout for that. And now, see you later, alligator. Peace out.